today we are here with an amazing young guest and we just want to hear his story. So welcome Collins. Hi Sifa, good Hi. to see you. Good to see you too actually. <laughs> we are here at Perdina Zua. Actually it's an amazing place. Uh, so for those actually who want to come here, it's actually a good place that you can just come and spend your time with maybe you or even with your family, with your friends. So challenge is on you. Anyway, Collins to begin with. Um, how are you? How are things? Uh, yeah, very well. Like I just said, um, I'm just driving down from Mombasa mm. at the meeting there. Uh, things are okay. I see the mm. weather is good. <laughs> True. And also good to see you and what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy to share um, in this structure, you know, mm. what is happening with me, okay. uh, my life generally, yeah. uh, my story, mm -hmm. and also just to impact and inspire those ones who are going to listen to me. So true. Yeah. Actually, looking at you, you know you're a very young person, <laughs> you know, and the things that you've done or achieved are quite a lot. So maybe if you can just break it down to, to us, like who is Collins, where did you school, <laughs> how was education like for okay, you? Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, uh -huh. So um, I don't know, um, I hold many facets uh -huh. in my life, but uh, the biggest uh, in my own, uh, or have defined it, is simplicity. Okay. So Collins is, uh, I don't know, should I say my age? I'm 25 years mm, Yeah, 25 <laughs> it is. Of age, um, um, born and bred in Western Kenya, Bungoma. Uh -huh and I also schooled there, uh, went to St. Mary's Kibabi mm -hmm. uh, High School and proceeded to the University of Nairobi, wow. proceeded to USIU, did my um, uh, MSc mm -hmm. in International Business. Okay. Uh, so that is my academia, uh, okay. that is in academics. Mm -hmm. And then uh, fast forward, I've been in employment, I think since I was in campus. I've done all those kind of jobs uh, people do in campus. Uh -huh. I've done uh, those promotions in supermarkets. I've put on those t-shirts mm -hmm. to sell yeah. products for Unilever, for example, promotions. Mm -hmm. uh, that was my very first, and actually mm -hmm. was in first year. Okay. Uh, and that is what opened up or opened me to, you know, the real you know, world. Mm -hmm. Like you have to put yourself out there. And okay. so I used to do that during the weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, uh -huh. when I'm not so busy in school, I dash okay. to a supermarket in pipeline. Mm -hmm. So I stay in South Sea, then dash to pipeline. Mm -hmm. Uh, being able to run those promotions and so on. Then um, I managed, or rather God opened ways for me. Mm -hmm. I met uh, one of the professors at the University of Nairobi. Mm -hmm. uh, actually two uh, professors. That's which year? Uh, that was uh, at second year. Okay. Uh, towards the tail end of my second year. Mm -hmm. And after I met them, uh, the first one was, uh, so I, I went to the University of Nairobi website Mm -hmm. read through um, what happens, I mean, just curiosity, mm. out of curiosity. And then I saw uh, this, this uh, program called Nairobi Innovation Week. I said, okay, okay, wow. Then went through the photos, looked mm -hmm. so nice. Then I said, ah, can I approach whoever convinced this? Who's the convener? Then I came to know it was Dr. Tony Omonsa. Okay. I went to Dr. Tony through a uh, friend of mine. Yeah. Uh, just, I went to his office, mm -hmm. you know, like I knocked. Because when I went to my friend, he told me, you have to go there and support your statement. Ooh. And I went there. I mean, it was, uh, I remember it was at 3 p.m. or 3 to 4 p.m. Okay. Going to his office and said, you know, Dr. Ari, mm -hmm. I'm so and so. I've seen what is happening in this. You're running a very big thing. It was opened by the president. Mm -hmm. I had the blessings of the Ministry of ICT mm -hmm. Education and so on. Mm -hmm. How can I get in? How can I do anything in this Nairobi Innovation? How can I be of impact? Yeah. And then Dr. Ari was like, what do you do? I told him I do uh, a major of commerce and uh, IT. Mm -hmm. told me, okay, fine. Which year? Second year. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. What can you do? I told him anything. <laughs> Give me any role. I'd oh. be happy to, uh -huh. uh, to jump in. And uh, the next day he invited me. Mm -hmm. Then he was so busy. He was mm -hmm. so busy on phones, you know, planning. It was a very huge thing, bringing together other countries, Finland, Alta yeah. University in Finland mm -hmm. and so on. Mm -hmm. So planning all those logistics, people are coming to stay mm -hmm. in Kenya and so on, and you, you're the chairman. So mm -hmm. he was so busy on phones. And that day he, was, he had an invitation for uh, at the embassy, uh, okay. the, the, the fin Finnish embassy yeah. in, uh, <coughs> in Westlands. Mm -hmm. So he was so busy on phones and, you know, he, he's supposed to drive. Yeah. Then as we were getting to the car, he's, the actor was like, do you know how to drive? Like, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. I can drive. Do you know your way around? Yeah, yeah. I told. I, I did. I, I'd never gone that direction. I told him yes, yes, yes. I can. Okay. I can drive you to Westlands. <laughs> I, I took up his car. He used to drive a Prado. Then, then we drove. I drove him down to Westlands, just going with my Google, up to the embassy. 
it was raining, I remember. It was a March, yeah. uh, actually around this time, March, April, uh -huh. raining. And then, uh, you know, they would go in there, have the ministers were there and so on. So they would have, and then I was just waiting for him and also just joined others. Mm -hmm. So networking and so on. And that is how I started building. I, uh, after that, mm -hmm. we now went into Nairobi Innovation Week now. Yeah. I was there as his point man, just mm -hmm. trying to see a few things where guests are sleeping mm -hmm. and, and their travel plans and so on uh, to make sure that they're okay. What has been your push? Because you are a young person, you are second year, remember? But you already have this drive in you that is leading you to this particular direction. Like, maybe you can tell us, what's it? Um, I think my, when I sleep at night, I always know that I am fighting for this alone. Not that I don't have family, I have a mm -hmm. very, very supportive mm -hmm. family. Yeah. Uh, very, very supportive, I mean. Yeah. They have taken me through school and everything. Mm -hmm. But what I always, when I retreat to my place or yeah. when I'm alone, mm -hmm. I always just know I am doing this because I have no fallback. I work like yeah. I have no fallback plan. Like if okay. anything goes wrong today, mm -hmm. If I do anything wrong, mm -hmm. then I'd have fried myself. It's like and you're that creating, be the end. Uh, creating a name for yourself. Exactly. I always, and every day I always start with new energy, just to be able mm. to know uh, what new thing can I be able to do. Not really every day, but at least mm -hmm. I keep on reflecting in that kind of uh, direction. Okay, yeah. so let me ask you, what has been your greed in terms of understanding your vision board and all that? Um... <laughs> Yeah, my, my scoreboard has always been, uh, first of all, I have things I've listed down. Okay. What I'm supposed to do, uh, where I'm supposed to be, mm. and where I want to go. Okay. So I have a whole scoreboard where mm. I tick boxes. Mm -hmm. So there's this inertia that, you know, keeps on telling me that you're not there yet. Mm. What else can you do? What extra thing can you do to make yeah. sure that? Uh, you're able to achieve one or two things. Okay. I've been thrown in deep ends even in corporates that I've worked for. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm new in an organization and then I'm given a task and I'm like, okay, I have no idea how this thing is going to be done. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I always tell myself, this thing has to get done. Either mm -hmm. if it means me going to read more or mm -hmm. consult yeah. or do whatever mm -hmm. or pay someone to teach me, I'll always do that just to look like I understand what I'm doing. So that has been the my grit i'd say mm -hmm. and just being able to really stay focused i also lose focus some uh, sometime mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. because things you know come in uh, bombard me at the same time and then you know yeah. you get shaken mm -hmm. but uh, i have been um, able to really delete those ones that are not so important mm -hmm. and focus on those ones that you know i can be able to achieve in time mm -hmm. uh, some within my budget okay. and those ones that I can be able to assi I mean, get assisted, mm -hmm. then I ask for assistance. So let me ask you, as a young boy, let me say that in primary school, what exactly do you want to be like when you're a young person? <laughs> right now you're an entrepreneur, so yeah. basically as a, as a kid, you want to be, did you want to be a business person or what exactly was it? Um, when I was growing up, of course, uh, when we were young in primary, mm -hmm. you know, those we were just flashing out things. I wanted yeah. to be a pilot. Mm. <laughs> I, I really wanted to be uh, in aviation and when I was growing up, my, yeah. my elder brother, mm -hmm. who uh, now going into high school, transiting from primary to high school, okay. my elder brother was working for airlines, uh, you know, as a business analyst and so on. Mm -hmm. And he would tell me, you know, just finish this thing and I get you in uh, yeah. w uh, one or the other. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, being an insider, so yeah. he would get me either through a program or something mm -hmm. that I can be able to pursue that kind of dream. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you know, as time goes, you, mm. <laughs> you have to reflect upon what, is, uh, what you can do. Yeah. And then that is how I now got into business. Well, I know most times when you are kids, we always have this particular kind of work. Like, let me say, maybe uh, you might say, I want to be a teacher or I want to be a doctor, I want to be a pilot. But in rare occasions, will you hear someone say, I want to be a business person? Exactly. You know? That is true. So how has it been? Uh -huh. Yeah, so, um, yeah. And business is, uh, I don't know if I'd advise anybody to go that direction because Why? we don't sleep sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, uh -huh. uh, at times we, or I have, I have partners, by the way, mm -hmm. uh, just young people like myself. Yeah. We contribute together and ideas and jump back ideas between one another and mm -hmm. be able to uh, push this thing. Okay. Sometimes we don't sleep and uh, stress levels hit the highest. So what are these kind of business that you guys do? 
Uh, so we, we have diversified. We have uh, a small consultancy okay. called Exergy Technologies, uh -huh. where we just give businesses ideas on what uh, solutions they can have in their ICT mm. uh, departments and so on. Yeah. Then we have, uh, we are deep in farming. <laughs> right now we are doing tomatoes in uh, Narok, wow. which is quite a distance from Nairobi. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it's six, six acres, so not a small thing, three people. Uh, and which is okay. 150 kilometers from where we are. Uh -huh. So that is, the, that is the one that gives us sleepless nights mm -hmm. because, um, you know, the sensitivity of the crop and so on, yeah. and also the financial implication that comes mm -hmm. with uh, yeah. bringing such kind of a crop. Mm -hmm. It is so financially intense. So, and uh, we're also going out uh, to do branding and so on because of the season that we're in. Okay. Uh, campaigns and so on, if you can get a contract here and there to do branding and so on. So, and we also hire, uh, or rather, connect people mm -hmm. with agencies that hire vehicles. Okay. So at travel agencies, like yeah. if you want to go to Masai Mara and mm -hmm. you've never been to Kenya, for example, you're flying in for the first time, uh -huh. you can uh, chat us and we have that conversation, then we link you uh, uh, to you know an agency that will be able to take care of you until the time you'll uh -huh. be going back at a cheaper rate than the current market rate. Why are you just a smart kid? Cool, that's <laughs> the thing that you are doing. I'm like, this guy is just from the village. <laughs> and then you come to Nairobi and the thing that you are doing. Yeah. Hey, I could, I could be a little bit kid. <laughs> Sincerely. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we were raised in. Um, I was raised in the in the village. I'm actually most of the most of my life actually eighty percent because up to eighteen years. Yeah. Uh, up to seventeen years we were mm -hmm. in the village because primary to high school. Yeah. And we used to visit Nairobi once in a while, mm -hmm. you know, for graduations or anything. Uh, and my parents are uh, my biggest uh, my biggest inspiration because mm -hmm. my parents have been able to raise they raised so many we are three in our home okay. but we had uh, my parents had uh, other responsibilities yeah. to raise you mm -hmm. know relatives and so on mm -hmm. it was so difficult you know to bring and i would say you know not able to, i mean not being uh, able to step in a public school for example mm -hmm. going into where they were paying so much yes. and all of us yeah. at the same time mm -hmm. and they are supposed also to do other things for themselves. Okay. They're also in school, mm. also advancing their studies and so on. Uh, my other biggest inspiration is my brother. My big brother, I have an elder brother who we are 10 years apart mm -hmm. as well as an elder sister. Yeah. But my brother is also a light that I look up to most of the time mm. uh, because he's been able to do actually Everything that we're doing, even with my friends currently, yeah. we go to him for advice. Like, can wow. we go this direction? Or he's like your role model. He like is. He actually, he actually, he actually, when he's in the country, he actually sits with us. We draw a plan. We tell him we are stuck here, even if it is financial mm -hmm. or something, advice something. He would always okay. chip in. So this has, and also I have uh, been able to get friends who are, um, who, who, whose vision also mm -hmm. aligns with mine. When we sit, of course, we have uh, that age. We are mm -hmm. that age where we want to have fun. And so we do true, that and true, we do that uh, mm -hmm. so much. But also when we retreat now to do serious things, then mm -hmm. we mean business when we're doing it. Talking of friends, let me ask you, you have been in campus. Uko campus, you have a gig, a job. You see, I want to understand, how do you handle peer pressure? Because in campus, these are young men, or maybe your friends are also female. And you're here, maybe say, someone is telling you, hey, let's go party. Why are you doing serious stuff right now at your age? You need to be doing this and this and this. How have you handled that? Yeah, I've had a lot of thought. I've, uh, <laughs> yeah. Honestly, uh, so many people, friends, colleagues, people I meet for the first time. Yeah. Uh, I remember the first time I was in media, in uh -huh. TV, talking about how I'm building a library uh -huh. in uh, Wasingishu County, okay. uh, in, a, in a school, just to be able to get partners Mm. Uh, and then I was getting text and so on when it was uploaded and people telling me, yeah. hey, guy, you, and that was in second year actually. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd say I've not been able to really focus on, on that. Mm -hmm. What I've done is uh, I've filtered out uh, those kind of comments mm -hmm. because uh, peer pressure is something uh, and also discouragement because somebody yeah. will come to you and tell you, hey boss, you have, uh, you have a, a whole life ahead true. of you. Yeah. I mean, can you have some fun <laughs> for now so and true. then yeah. you'll do this later? Uh -huh. Well, I have fun and I have my own fun, which I think uh -huh. is uh, 
also measured. Uh -huh. We will not go out every day. We will not uh, be out there dancing and drinking every day. Mm. So I've been able. Uh, I don't respond to them. Mm -hmm. uh, so I just listen to what you have to tell me. Okay. And then after we finish, then mm -hmm. it ends there. Then I proceed with whatever I was doing. Okay. So I've not been able. And and there is there is a lot. There is what you call the fear of missing out. <clears throat> Uh, fear of missing out, and especially in our generation, mm -hmm. my friends have seen them. I've, you know, when, when we meet and talk in these functions in forums, mm -hmm. and you know, they are like, you're so out there, like you're, you're doing different things uh, yeah. out of uh, what some of us are doing. Mm -hmm. Like, what is the secret? And uh, I've never shied away to pull one or two, those ones mm -hmm. who are interested, of course, yeah. mm -hmm. to pull them and tell them, we can sit here and, you know, I. Give me ideas, I give him. I'm not uh -huh. the smartest brain in the room. Uh -huh. That is always what I've believed. Yeah. That I'm not, there's only somebody who, is, who has better True. ideas than me, yeah. who has better functionalities than me and everything. Uh -huh. yeah. So can you come uh -huh. on board? Let's sit, talk about it. Or uh -huh. if we can partner, then the better. Because I always believe also doing something alone is not the best way to succeed. Uh, if you bring on board others, uh -huh. uh, then you go far. Uh -huh.